Let me ask you about uh, Alan Weisselberg. Uh, he, you heard his uh, former daughter-in-law telling Tom Winter uh, that he would he could be the ultimate tour guide uh, through the system. And of course, a lot of people thought you'd be the ultimate tour guide. Tell me about Weisselberg and what he may have known that 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 you already know. Right. So Alan Weisselberg is the chief financial officer of the Trump Organization. He is by far the longest serving and acting. Uh, executive at the Trump Organization. Basically, Fred Trump told Donald to take Alan Weisselberg, really because Fred didn't trust um, Donald with the money that he was loaning him in order to get into business. And Alan, then ultimately, who was the bookkeeper, became the CFO and, as I said, the longest serving executive at the organization. Now, I don't know if I would say that Alan is the roadmap to the investigation. Truthfully, Whatever they have, they have. Would it be better to have the accountant always, considering there was not a single um, dollar in and not a single dollar out of that company that did not cross through Alan Weisselberg's desk? So in regard to the financial crimes that are being discussed right now in the investigation, many of which you have seen uh, at my open um testimony before the House Oversight Committee, it would certainly be helpful for Alan Weisselberg's testimony. But it is not fatal to their investigation. Remember, they just obtained more than a million pages of documents, eight years worth of Mr. Trump's and the Trump Organization's tax returns. That's the that's the real roadmap there. And many people, including the companies that they brought in, are able to decipher it myself included. You don't need to charge him on 20 issues. All you need is one. And believe me, they have more than one. So my recommendation for Alan, as I had stated to Jane Mayer, if unless you want to spend some time uh, in a in a camp like I did and you want to put your boys at risk, uh, I'm pretty sure that he'll be providing information to the district attorney. And look, uh, when you have somebody like Mark Pomerantz, who is a seasoned veteran when it comes to this type of litigation. And he's been on both sides of the fence. He's been a tough-nosed prosecutor, and he's been a hard-nosed defender. He knows the game better than anybody, and I can't imagine who they're going to bring in in order to challenge his capabilities. So Pomerantz knows the game better than anyone. You know what was going on in the Trump administration, uh, the, the Trump organization better than anyone. You and you and Alan Weisselberg. Do you have confidence that Pomerantz has the information uh, that he needs and a good understanding of what this this takes? Because it does sound like they've got more than a million pages of documents. You said they have what they have. Do you think they have what they need and that Pomerantz knows what to do with it? Oh, I'm certain about that. You know, as I've always said, you know, um, paper doesn't lie. Individuals do. So no matter what Donald Trump is going to try to claim, uh, the, the pages don't lie. You also have Mazer. You have the accounting firm that was doing it. Now, again, does it make the chain of information uh, easier to understand when you have all of the individuals that participated, right? So, for example, you brought up the Stormy Daniels payment. As I made crystal clear during my statement uh, prior to incarceration before Judge William H. Pauley, which sadly went mostly um, ignored, one of the things that I said is that I did this at the direction of and for the benefit of Donald J. Trump. But what I also included is the fact that Alan Weisselberg was a party to my conversations with Mr. Trump, hence the um, recording that was ultimately put out uh, on CNN when Rudy Giuliani claimed certain things that were, of course, not true. I mean, what do you expect? It's Rudy. Uh, so Alan Weisselberg was a party to that. The more people that if you can get everybody that was involved, it's certainly better. But yeah. it's not the end oh. all be all. You know, one of the things, Ali, also, a lot of people on social media, they reach out to me and say, oh, if you have the goods, you know, drop it, give it, spill it. I know there are a lot of people out there, especially that watch this show and watch you, um, that are interested in me sitting here and spilling all of the information. And please understand when I say that I can't do that or I can't do it. I just choose not to simply because it doesn't help the it doesn't help the district attorney and it doesn't help the investigation 
in order to hold those people responsible for their own dirty deeds. And that's one of the reasons why I have now spent eight sessions, eight different sessions going back over a year and a half, closer to two years, when the district attorney first came to Otisville to interview me. After eight times, you could rest assured, they're not asking me once again to come in for a ninth time simply because they find me funny or because they just have nothing to do. Each and every time, they're drilling down more and more and more. And so ultimately, why did you need to go you know, in person start this time? to see very soon. Yeah, you're going to see very soon, in my opinion, uh, indictments uh, start flying. So why did you need to go in person this time? What was different? Well, there, like I said, there's over a million documents. And rest assured, there's one thing I can tell you about Cy Vance and Mark Pomerantz and the entire district attorney team. They are well organized. They are disciplined. They are methodical in their questioning and their documentation. I mean, there was more paper there, all tabulated in three ring books, um, you know, itemized for questions that they wanted to pose by me. There was more than you would possibly even imagine. Um, it was like a paper vault of information. And, you know, there's a lot of documentation. And look, right now I'm on home confinement, so I certainly have a lot of free time to head downtown, you know, to sit with them. And like I said, one of the reasons that I'm doing this is if this is I will not be the villain of Donald Trump's story. They need to all be held responsible for their own dirty deeds. I don't want to be responsible for their actions.